Hello everybody and a very happy Easter to you all. I bet you're all looking forward to the Easter holidays by now, aren't you? Even though we're still sort of locked down, there are lots of things you can do at Easter still, aren't there? You could fly off to the moon. You could lie down in the mud in a field. Perhaps that doesn't sound so much fun. What about having a barbecue instead with a limited number of people? I believe you can hang out with up to five other friends or one other family. Or you could spend the whole of the Easter holidays zoned out in front of a screen playing Fortnite, couldn't you? Well, wouldn't that be a good way to spend the Easter vacation? Or what about a lovely trip to the top of the Malvern Hills to enjoy the view? How fantastic would that be? Or maybe you could go on a small holiday with your family. There are lots of things you can do at Easter. You could even spend some time trying to rebuild a broken Easter egg. Here's one I prepared earlier. It's sort of like a wonderful three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle, isn't it? You see, I've got, you see, you could just, just spend you could spend absolutely hours just trying to put this back together. All the pieces fit, you see. Look, they, they go together perfectly, don't they? You could have a great time doing that. Although, do be careful to make sure your hands are nice and cold because the chocolate's going to melt all over it. And the more the chocolate melts on your hands, the less chance you've got of actually being able to put the egg back together. And whatever you do, don't eat any of the pieces because if you eat any of the pieces, then you're never going to be able to put the egg back together again, are you? So, uh, yeah, have fun doing your 3D modelling and jigsaw Easter egg building over Easter if you want. Remember how the old nursery rhyme goes? Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. I don't know who wrote that rhyme, but I think they understood something important about our lives today. You see, when God made the world, it was beautiful, perfect, it was whole. Imagine it like a beautiful, perfect Easter egg. The David Attenborough series that was on just after Christmas. Do you remember what it was called? It was called A Perfect Planet. And the first episode began with a story about the beauty of our world. How unique and special it is. And every episode ended with a description of how people are ruining it. Imagine the world then like this shiny new egg. It's beautiful, isn't it? I bet you want that. Let me spin it round and round like our world. I'll bring it nice and close to the camera so you can see it going. Isn't it glorious and lovely? I bet you all want to eat that, don't you? And God's given this into our care. And what have we done with it? We've turned it into something like this. We've broken it. And that brokenness isn't just about the environment. It's everything. It's war and it's disease and it's greed and it's famine and it's selfishness it's discrimination we've broken god's perfect planet and smashed it into ever smaller pieces and whilst there are still bits that could potentially be put back together there's really no way of fixing the whole because we're too broken no matter how hard we try to fix god's perfect world we can't put Humpty Dumpty together again. But God can. And to understand how he did it, I need you to imagine something. Suppose this Easter you get a wonderful big Easter egg. I'll move it nice and close to the camera. You can imagine just how big that is. It's enormous, isn't it? And lovely and perfect. And then your big brother comes and smashes it into lots and lots of wriggly, wiggly pieces. Oh, we've got chocolate absolutely everywhere there now. And then you come home afterwards and you find it in a million, million pieces. Oh dear, let me just dispose of that one. Yes. So, what would you expect your parents to do about it? Now, I dare say you would probably want them to tell off your brother, wouldn't you? And maybe, just maybe, you'd want them to try to repair your poor, broken Easter egg. Well, that is what the story of Easter is all about. 
But it starts not at Easter, it starts at Christmas. At the first Christmas, God came into the world as Jesus. And he lived among, well, the broken pieces, the broken people, until he was an adult for about 30 years, we think. And then at the very first Easter, in the middle of a festival called the Passover, at which the Jews celebrated God's rescue from slavery in Egypt, the broken people turned on Jesus. And even though he himself wasn't broken, and even though he'd never done anything wrong, they punished him and they killed him. They made him part of the brokenness. And God said, this death, the death that Jesus suffered on the cross, this punishment can be a punishment for all people. I will be punished in your place, he said. And then three days later, God took the brokenness, took his broken son and put him back together again. He made him alive again. He took what was broken and made it new. And he's promised that if we'll trust him, he'll do the same for us. And that's what Easter is all about. And what it means is that we can now come to God with all of our brokenness, all the mess and the sadness of our lives. And we can give it over to him. We can give it to Jesus. And because of what happened to Jesus, our brokenness can be healed and made whole again. So this Easter, as you're eating your eggs, remember to thank God for Jesus. And remember, it's only Jesus who can put Humpty Dumpty back together again. I hope you'll have a very happy Easter. Let's finish today with a short prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for all we've learnt and done this term. Bless us during the Easter holidays and help us always to remember Jesus, especially as we're eating our Easter eggs. Amen. Bye-bye.